Question number one. Which of the following creates a flapping sound near the front of the engine? A. Timing belt tension too tight. B. Drive belt too tight. C. Drive belt too loose. D. Timing belt tension too loose. Correct answer is. D. Timing belt tension too loose. Explanation. A loose timing belt will cause a flapping sound near the front of the engine. Question number two. An engine noise sounds like a knock at the side of the engine that is louder when the engine is cold and goes away or is reduced when the engine reaches operating temperature. Which of the following is the most likely cause? A. Chem bearing. B. Main bearing. C. Piston slap. D. Wrist pin. Correct answer is. C. Piston slap. Explanation. Piston slap is a knock heard at the side of the engine which is louder when the engine is cold and goes away or is reduced when the engine reaches operating temperature. Question number three. This question is not like the others. It has the word except. For this question, look for the choice that could not cause the described situation. Read the entire question carefully before choosing your answer. All of the following are reasons why you must disable the fuel injection system and ignition system when conducting an engine compression test, except A. Prevents damage to the ignition system during the test. B. Prevents fuel injection into the cylinders. C. Prevents a shop engine fire. D. Prevents inaccurate readings. Correct answer is D. Prevents inaccurate readings. Explanation. The purpose for disconnecting the fuel injection and ignition systems is safety related. Reading accuracy is very important but not what was asked. Question number four. A power balance test is being performed on an engine. Technician A says to note the engine RPM before and during the test for each cylinder. Technician B says to record the RPM drop for each cylinder. Who is right? A. A only. B. B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither and not B. Correct answer is. C. Both A and B. Explanation. Both technicians are correct. Tech A is right because engine RPM, revolutions per minute, is an indicator of when that cylinder is contributing to the engine power and if it is balanced. You note the RPM before and during the test so when the cylinder is shorted out you can tell if it changes. Tech B is right because when the engine speed, RPM, does not drop or change, then that cylinder is not having an effect on engine operation or balance. Question number 5. What engine seal is pictured in the below illustration? A. Rear main. B. Camshaft plug. C. Throttle valve. D. Valve. Correct answer is D. Valve. Explanation. A valve seal is shown in the picture. Question number six. Technician A says the closed coil end of a valve spring should go against the cylinder head. Technician B says all valve springs use shims to control free spring height. Who is right? A. A only. B. B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Correct answer is A. A only. Explanation. Technician A is a correct. A closed coil end of a valve spring should go against the cylinder head. Technician B is wrong because all valve springs do not use shims to control assembled height. It is also wrong because it should state assembled height. Question number seven. This question is not like the others. It has the word except. For this question, look for the choice that could not fit the described situation. Read the entire question carefully before choosing your answer. All of the following statements are correct when adjusting valve lash on engines with overhead camshaft cylinder heads, except A. Shims may be used to make adjustments. B. Clearance is measured between the camshaft and follower or rocker on most engines. C. The follower or rocker must be on the base circle of the camshaft when measuring. D. The engine must be cold for all engine manufacturers. Correct answer is. D. The engine must be cold for all engine manufacturers. Explanation. You must check the specific OEM procedure for adjusting valves either hot or cold.
Question number 8. The surface of the cylinder head has just been machined. What will have to be done to the valve train? A. Lengthening the push rods. B. Increasing valve spring tension. C. Grinding the valve stems. D. Shim the head. Correct answer is C. Grinding the valve stems. Explanation. Grinding the valve stems will have to be done because the distance has been reduced between the rocker and the pushrod, so you grind the valve stem to compensate. Question number 9. A technician hears a knock or thumping at the side of the engine block that is louder when the engine is hot and goes away when the affected cylinder is shorted out. Which of the following could be the cause? A. Main bearing. B. Wrist pin. C. Rod bearing. D. Piston slap. Correct answer is C. Rod bearing. Explanation. Rod bearing noise is a thumping noise or knock at the side of the engine block that is louder when the engine is hot and goes away when the affected cylinder is shorted out. A is wrong because main bearing noise is constant and cannot be shorted out. A main bearing noise is generally deeper sounding than a rod bearing. Also, a main bearing makes an evenly spaced single knock while a rod bearing generally makes a double knock. B is wrong. A wrist pin noise can be diagnosed by disconnecting spark plug wires one at a time. Should the noise in the engine immediately double in frequency, then it's a wrist pin. Should the noise merely diminish a bit, then probably a rod knock caused by a loose bearing. D is wrong because piston slap noise disappears once the engine is warm. Piston slap could be caused by the piston skirt deforming under stress. Question number 10. An engine is making a knocking sound that changes with RPM, and the noise disappears while a cylinder is being tested during the cylinder balance test. Which of the following could be the cause? A. Rod bearing. B. Main bearing. C. Piston slap. D. Burnt valve. Correct answer is A. Rod bearing. Explanation. A bad rod bearing will make a knocking sound with changes in RPM and disappear when the cylinder is shorted out. Question number 11. Technician A says old antifreeze may cause corrosion buildup in the cooling system. Technician B says some original equipment manufacturers, OEM, recommend that the coolant be changed at specified intervals. Who is right? A. A only. B. B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Correct answer is C. Both A and B. Explanation Both technicians are correct. Antifreeze or engine coolant contains corrosion inhibitor that wears out over time, so this is the reason it is recommended that the coolant be replaced and the system flushed at a service interval. The freeze protection of the coolant never changes. Question number 12. This question has the word least. For this question, look for the choice that would least likely fit the described situation. Read the entire question carefully before choosing your answer. Which of the following steps is least likely to be necessary when refilling a cooling system? A. Bleeding the air out of the system. B. Mixing tap water and distilled water. C. Mixing the proper ratio of water to coolant. D. Check the radiator cap for proper fit. Correct answer is B. Mixing tap water and distilled water. Explanation. Distilled water is the least likely required in a cooling system because it has no effect on the cooling ability of the solution. Distilled water is not required in a cooling system. It is used with battery electrolyte. Question number 13. A technician is using a laptop computer and manufacturer software to test the ECT, electronic controlled throttle, circuit that has a stored DTCP 1121 electric throttle control actuator. Which of the following customer concerns could be caused by a defective ECT return spring malfunction? A. Rough idle. B. Low power. C. High idle. D. Detonation. Correct answer is B. Low power. Explanation. The ECM has a stored DTC. 
P1121 Electric Throttle Control Actuator When the malfunction is detected, ECM enters failsafe mode and the MIL lights up. While the engine is in failsafe mode and malfunction A of DTC, P1121 is detected, the engine speed will not rise more than 2000 RPM and thus cause a low power complaint. The ECM controls the electric throttle actuator by regulating the throttle opening around the idle position. Question number 14. Technician A says the voltage required maintaining spark is referred to as the spark line and the duration of the spark line is based on total primary circuit resistance and coil voltage available. Technician B says problems with the burning, called fuel propagation, will show up within the spark line. Who is right? A. A only. B. B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Correct answer is... B, B only. Explanation. Technician B is correct because problems with the fuel slash air burning, called fuel propagation, will show up within the spark line. Technician A is wrong because the voltage required maintaining spark is referred to as the spark line and the duration of the spark line is based on total secondary circuit resistance, not primary circuit resistance, and coil voltage available. A typical firing voltage for a DI system is 8 to 10 kilovolts, kV. The spark line, which indicates the amount of time current flows across the spark plug gap, should also be smooth and level. Normal current flow usually lasts 1.2 to 2 milliseconds. Short or uneven spark lines, like high firing voltages, indicate high secondary circuit resistance. Question number 15. You are using a diagnostic symptom chart to diagnose an electronically controlled 5-speed automatic RWD, rear-wheel drive, transmission with a strange noise in drive. Technician A says the control valve could be the cause and is an OFF vehicle procedure. Technician B says the oil pump assembly could be the cause and is an OFF vehicle procedure. Who is right? A, A only. B, B only. C, both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Correct answer is B. B only. Explanation Technician B is correct because the oil pump assembly could be the diagnostic item and is an OFF vehicle procedure. Technician A is wrong because the control valve is likely to be the cause in an on-vehicle procedure, not an OFF vehicle procedure. Question number 16. On an electronically controlled four-speed automatic transaxle, you experience a shock when shifting from N to D. Which of the following will require an OFF vehicle repair? A. Line pressure test. B. A slash T fluid temperature sensor. C. Control valve assembly. D. Forward clutch. Correct answer is D. Forward clutch. Explanation. The only OFF vehicle repair listed for a vehicle that exhibits a shock when shifting from N to D range is the forward clutch. All of the other distractors are on vehicle repairs. Question number 17. Technician A says you pick the symptom in the online service information that closely matches the customer concern. Technician B says the customer will describe their concerns as they are listed in the online service information. Who is right? A. A only. B. B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Correct answer is A. A only. Explanation. You pick the symptom in the online service information that closely matches the customer concern. The customer will generally describe their concerns much differently than they are listed in the online service information. Question number 18. This question has the word accept. For this question, look for the choice that could not fit the described situation. Read the entire question carefully before choosing your answer. Preliminary diagnosis on an electronically controlled automatic transmission slash transaxle consists of all the following tests, except A. Line pressure test B. Fluid check C. Stall test D. Flex plate check 
Correct answer is D. Flex plate check. Explanation Checking the flex plate is not part of the preliminary diagnosis process. Question number 19. Technician A says engine, suspension, and driveline problems may appear to be caused by the transmission or transaxle. Technician B says you start with the simple inspections first to ensure that you have not overlooked something and you can use the skin tool for further clarification. Who is right? A. A only. B. B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Correct answer is C. Both A and B. Explanation Both technicians are correct. Tech A is right because many suspension and driveline concerns and noises may appear to be caused by the transmission or transaxle when they are caused by the suspension. For diagnosis, you put the transmission in neutral and see if the concern changes or goes away. If it goes away, the automatic transmission should be investigated. Tech B is right because you always do the easy and simple inspections first to make sure that you have not overlooked something and you can use the skin tool for further clarification. Question number 20. You are checking fluid color on an automatic transmission slash transaxle. Which of the following will cause the fluid to be varnished with a light to dark brown color? A. Oxidation from overfilling. B. Water contamination. C. Engine coolant contamination. D. Wear from friction material. Correct answer is A. Oxidation from overfilling. Explanation Oxidation from under or overfilling will cause the fluid to be varnished with a light to dark brown color. Question number 21. DTC. Diagnostic Trouble Code, P0705PNP. Park slash neutral position, switch circuit is being diagnosed. Technician A says this code sets when the TCM. Transmission Control Module, or PCM. Powertrain Control Module, does not receive the correct voltage signal from the park slash neutral position, PNP, switch. Technician B says the park slash neutral position, PNP, switch circuit could be open or shorted. Who is right? A. A only. B. B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Correct answer is C. Both A and B. Explanation Both technicians are correct. Technician A is right because the diagnostic trouble code sets when the TCM, transmission control module, or PCM, powertrain control module, does not receive the correct voltage signal from the park slash neutral position PNP switch. Technician B is right because the park slash neutral position PNP switch being open or shorted would also set a DTC. Question number 22. Technician A says low line pressure on an electronically controlled line pressure can cause the transmission to slip and operate sluggishly. Technician B says line pressure varies with engine speed. Who is right? A. A only. B. B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Correct answer is A. A only. Explanation Technician A is correct because low line pressure can cause the transmission to slip and operate sluggishly. Technician B is wrong because the line pressure should not vary with engine speed. It must remain at a constant level to correctly operate the friction components. It will be lower at idle because of lower RPM as sensed by the TCM or PCM. Question number 22. A line pressure test shows low pressure at idle in all ranges on an electronically controlled automatic transmission. Which of the following can be the cause? A. Maladjusted TP, throttle position, sensor. B. ATF. Automatic Transmission Fluid, Temperature Sensor C. Open and Dropping Resistor Circuit D. Oil Pump Pressure Regulator Correct answer is D. Oil Pump Pressure Regulator Explanation A problem in the oil pump or oil pump pressure regulator will cause low pressure at idle in all gear ranges. Answer option A is wrong because a misadjusted TPS can cause high line pressure at idle not low. 
B is wrong because a problem with the ATF temperature sensor will cause high line pressure at idle not low. C is wrong because an open in a dropping resistor circuit will cause high line pressure at idle not low pressure. Question number 23. Using the chart below to diagnose a four-speed automatic transaxle, which of the following is the most likely cause of no engine braking in manual second? A. Forward clutch. B. Third clutch. C. Input sprag. D. Two to four band. Correct answer is D. Two to four band. Explanation. The two to four band is used for manual braking. The forward clutch is not used for braking and is on in all forward speeds. The third or direct clutch is not used for braking and is on for direct drive and reverse. Question number 24. When removing an engine from a vehicle equipped with an automatic transmission, the torque converter does which of the following? A. Stays with transmission. B. Stays with engine. C. Must be drained. D. Must be flushed. Correct answer is. A. Stays with transmission. Explanation. This is the proper procedure when the transmission is not going to be disassembled. If left on the engine, all of the oil will leak out and make a huge mess. Question number 25. This question has the word except. For this question, look for the choice that could not fit the described situation. Read the entire question carefully before choosing your answer. When inspecting the flex plate shown in the photo below, you should check it for all of the following, except A. Cracks B. Elongated bolt holes C. Damaged starter ring teeth D. Crankshaft pilot bearing Correct answer is D. Crankshaft pilot bearing Explanation Automatic transmissions do not use a crankshaft. Pilot bearing